Welcome to this short tutorial about DrawMesh Streamline Tool. DrawMesh is a new addition to Anvil's toolset and it allows to perform quick semi-automatic retopologization. It also makes it possible to draw geometry patches in 3D space. This video will be focused around the retopo part. So to start using DrawMesh you need to assign it some hockey because by default it isn't bound to anything, it doesn't have a shortcut. So let's dive into Edit, Customize, Streamline Tools, dive into Built-in Tools and look for Draw Mesh. There it is. Hit Set Hotkey and if you want to assign it a shortcut consisting of two or more keys, you'll need to tick this Multi-Keys button, uh, checkbox. But I'm going to set my hotkey to B because this is one of the very few left-handed keys that I still have available in my configuration. Uh, you probably also want to make the tool persistent so that when you enter it by pressing its hotkey it will not require from you to keep this key combination depressed while you are drawing. In order to do this enable the Allow tab to Stay Alive checkbox. OK. Apply. Yes. As you can see, I already added my reference objects to Retapo reference list and I already froze them so that I won't be able to select them accidentally in the viewport while I am retopologizing. Uh, one more thing that is worth mentioning is that if you don't want to be able to select or snap to Retapo components obscured by frozen reference geometry, you need to enable Edit uh, Preferences options to include retopo reference objects in selection and snapping occlusion. Okay, I strongly recommend to perform this step. Alright, um, you can start drawing curves without selecting any, any object and in all component modes like objects, faces, edges, or vertices. And without any object selected, Draw Mesh will simply create a new one upon mesh generation and if you select the object beforehand the generated mesh will become part of it it will be merged with it um, throughout this tutorial I'll be using a lot of hotkeys that might be a subject of change in future Anvil versions so if you find that some draw mesh hotkeys are not working you can always consult consult the the tooltip the tool and there are several ways to do it you can open the tool search window and type the name of a tool like draw mesh in our case click it oh. and there you have it in the top section you can uh, it's not apparent but you can control A control C to copy it to your clipboard and paste it into your favorite editor for printing or, or reading and you can also do the same in Edit, Customize, Tools, look for Draw Mesh, and there you have it, Tooltip. It's quite long and this text field is quite small, so you can also Ctrl A, Ctrl C, and paste it somewhere. Uh, Tooltips. Tooltips are enabled by default for each draw mesh mode in its UI window. You can uh, pretty much find info about everything. And you can close this, this wall of text by clicking this question mark button. Mm, lastly, all contextual operations for a currently active tool are displayed in the heads up display over here. And you can disable the, them at any time by selecting view, display, heads up display, um, show activated tool queue info. So if you don't like it, you can just hide it. But as you can see, they can be quite helpful. 
Okay, you can hide the user interface window if you want to. Just untick the auto show button and hit the home key. And if you want to reveal it again, hit home key again once you are in draw mesh um, tool and restore this auto show checkbox. Okay, that's that's about it. To draw a stroke, you need to first enter draw mesh mode. Press and hold left mouse button and drag your mouse. All intersections will become vertices. To generate the mesh, close the draw mesh tool by pressing the draw mesh hotkey again. And be careful, because almost all of the tool modes are camera dependent. It's not exactly a camera projection, but nevertheless, before generating your geometry, first make sure that none of your curves is obscured by the reference. For example, this worked. However, if I were to rotate the camera, say, to this position, and generate the mesh, I'm going to get a mangled result. So, Always try to keep the camera more or less perpendicular to the surface uh, you are retopologizing. You can draw splines by tapping the left mouse button and where you want uh, your control points to appear. And you finish the line with the spline by pressing right mouse button. holding left mouse button and shift you can draw aligned lines horizontal or vertical control allows for drawing diagonal lines to draw a line of at any angle you press the left mouse button and tap spacebar. Now don't release left mouse, button, no left mouse button yet. Just drag your mouse and to finish the line now you can release. Notice that there's a sticky dashed line attached to your cursor and this means that you can continue drawing lines or strokes without leaving uh, the current draw mode. So, for example, I can draw a stroke, I can draw a line, and stroke again. And note that Shift modifier will allow for creating aligned lines. To exit draw line mode, press the right mouse button. You can snap curves to already existing endpoints by enabling vertex snapping. It will also allow to snap to intersections. And speaking of intersections, with draw mesh you can easily create poles of any valence. You can do this by either snapping to intersections with vertex snapping, just like I just did, or taking advantage of auto weld radius. And you tweak the radius by pressing Ctrl and rolling your mouse wheel. Upon mesh generation, Anvil will weld all vertices that are caught within the specified distance. So I don't need to be that precise while I'm drawing. It's enough for the radius to, to catch the vertices. OK. 
Okay. You can close any curve that you are drawing by tapping caps lock and space while still holding to that mouse button. Or if you need to close an existing line, hover the cursor over the line, depress right mouse button and tap caps lock and space. To remove curves, press the right mouse button. To continue drawing an existing curve, hover over it, over one of its halves, hold right mouse button, I mean caps lock, and click right mouse button. Now when you see this dashed line, you can release the caps lock and left mouse button. Because anything that applied to drawing an angled line applies to this mode as well. So I can create lines or strokes. I can even close it. And to exit from the append mode, press the right mouse button. Sometimes you may want to break a curve in two. Move the cursor over the curve and press and hold right mouse button, then tap Alt and Space. Right? We have two curves now. And to see the result better, I'll enable vertex snapping, which will show us curve endpoints. Right click, I mean, right uh, press right mouse button and Alt Space. Now, let's join those segments back together. Hover over one of its halves of the, of the curve, press and hold right mouse button, and then tap spacebar. Okay. In order for two curves to join, the endpoints must be at the same location in 3D space. And just as a reminder, instead of relying on hotkeys, you can always use Draw Mesh User Interface window. If you don't feel comfortable using so many keyboard shortcuts, you don't need to use them at all, or almost at all, because some actions will still require a couple of keys to be pressed, but nowhere as many as you would have to press otherwise while working without the UI. For example, let's close this curve. Alright. And maybe... Let's draw another one. And join them. Okay. Alright. So, we have covered the basics of curve drawing. And with only this alone, we, we can already begin to retopologize your models. So, let's do it right now. I'm going to retopologize this side. So, let's go to Draw Mesh and maybe hide this eye reference.
Okay. This looks good. Alright. Well, that looks... It looks okay. Of course, Joe Mesh is more than that. Um, in the next chapter, I'm going to talk about more complex and more interesting features. Curve transformations. Every curve that you draw with Draw Mesh Streamline tool can be transformed. You can translate it, rotate it, scale, circularize, snap it to symmetry plane, and even duplicate it. To enter transformations mode, you need to hover over the curve, press and hold left mouse button, and tap Alt. The left mouse button is to be kept pressed for the duration of applying transformations. The default operation is translation, and you don't need to use any additional hotkeys for this. Just move your mouse and the curve will follow. Next operation is scaling, and is performed with the shift key. To scale horizontally, hold shift and drag the cursor left or right. To scale vertically, hold shift and drag it up and down. To rotate the curve, you press control key and drag left or right. Hold caps lock to circularize and drag to scale. And the curve doesn't need to be closed for the circularize operation to work. If you want a circle, you need to close the curve first. All right. To snap the curve to symmetry plane, press space while in transform mode, but first I'm gonna create some geometry and apply symmetry to it, because otherwise it won't work. All right. Now let's draw the curve. left mouse button out and then press space and symmetry snapping takes a few moments for some reason so don't worry if it freezes anvil for a couple of seconds all right and now we have our curve length at the exact position of the symmetry plane this also snapped to reference a surface more or less um, so finally curve duplication Press Alt and Space, and drag the new copy out of its original location. So, left mouse button, Alt, and then Alt Space. Remember that in all of the above operations you need to keep left mouse button depressed. Ok, so this concludes transforming of draw mesh curves. Using Draw Mesh with Symmetry is very easy. First of all, you need to have some geometry already present in the scene because you need something to apply symmetry to. Fortunately, our retopo object already has symmetry enabled because we applied it in the previous chapter. So, the first method of working with draw mesh and symmetry is to start from drawing a symmetry line. Don't worry about it being crooked because we're going to project it on the symmetry plane using the transform mode that we are already familiar with. So, left mouse button, 
alt space. And there it is. I draw some I draw some more curves to complete the patch. And generate. Okay. You probably notice those little X's. Appearing in areas where curves intersect with symmetry plane. They are symmetry markers and their purpose is to act as helper objects when operating near the symmetry plane. Any line that goes through at least two of those points, of those markers, no matter how curvy, is treated by the program as a center of symmetry or the symmetry line. These markers can help with the second technique of drawing near the symmetry plane. So I'm going to clear it and begin with drawing horizontal lines. Now using vertex snapping I'm going to draw center of symmetry coming from this marker to this. Oh, this is a very wonky line, but do not fret, it shall be straight after the mesh is generated. Now complete the patch by adding boundary, curve and some segments. My main symmetry line being slightly offset from the newly generated uh, symmetry markers doesn't matter much, because as long as at least two points, two of the curve's points go through the markers, the whole line will be straightened. And that's basically it. Nice and simple. There are several ways of performing a bridge operation that connects existing geometry or draw mesh curves to other existing geometry or draw mesh curves. For the first method, we need to enable edge snapping. Click with left mouse button on an edge or curve that you want to create a bridge from and drag towards the target. It may be an existing edge or existing curve. To bridge multiple edges or curves, select the range by left mouse clicking on the first element, then click and hold the same mouse button on the last element and drag towards the target. While still holding left mouse button, you can press and hold control and drag the mouse left or right to change the number of bridge segments. Alternatively, you can roll your mouse for the same effect. You can also use this method to extrude existing edges or curves. And while we're at it, there are three modifiers that you can use while extruding. For example, you can scale the extruded edges by holding Ctrl and Alt and moving your mouse left and right. And you can rotate them with Ctrl and Shift. And of course you can add segments by holding Ctrl. And if you're getting a mangled result, for example, let's you bridge the edges, press space. Okay, um, I'm demonstrating this on existing edges, but naturally it also works with curves. So let me quickly draw a small patch. Um, oops. Okay. There you go. Let's put on this. 
extrusion and you can end the current extrusion and start a new one by pressing shift key okay you can also create an outset just pick the same edge as start and end edge by clicking it once with that mouse button and then once again and drag you'll notice that the whole boundary edges are getting extruded but in the wrong direction we want them to extrude outwards so press caps lock and there it is the second method of bridging is to enable vertex snapping and simply draw two curves between the patches that are to be bridged Then, hover over one of the, those curves, hold caps lock, and drag horizontally. Left mouse button and caps lock combination is one of the most important features of Draw Mesh. It allows for automatic patch generation, which greatly speeds up retopo process. You will find yourself using it all the time. Uh, probably the most basic use case of patch generation, a part of what I just presented, is creating a fill for an area enclosed by four curves. So let's deal with those patches now. I will start by drawing four curves to create a rectangular area. Then Move the mouse cursor over one of those curves, press and hold caps lock, then press and hold left mouse button. This will show a preview of the patch. Release caps lock key. Dragging the mouse left and right will uniformly change the number of divisions from arbitrary X and Y axis. To change the number of rings only, hold control and drag. To change the number of loops, Hold shift and drag. Exit the tool to create a patch. Of course, patch creation will work on any area enclosed by splines that the program can interpret as a quad patch. For example, I'm going to draw this bend with some wavy ends. And the draw mesh still picks this up and we can create a patch out of it, although not too pretty. Um, it will also work with um, patches that consist of more than four curves, for example. Here we have five, five curves. And in this particular example, we will only be allowed to change the number of rings because the number of loops will be automatically borrowed from those two curves. Right. This is useful because it allows for joining patches together and Anvil will pick up the number of segments from the neighbors. Let's see. Let's pick up our geometry. Let's create a patch for, for our chick. Few patches, actually. Oops. Oh. Okay, maybe some more loops. Like so. It's amazing how fast you can cover a lot of ground with with just patches. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes when you need to create a patch in a space enclosed by existing edges, the patch might not initially be generated on the side that you want it to be generated on. Like here, for example. Let's say we want to generate a patch here on this side, but as you can see, and we want to generate it on the other side. When this happens, you can tap space to tell Anvil to switch the patch to the other side. And final thing, the final thing I would like to talk about is retopologization of the cylindrical shapes like neck, arms, legs and so on. I'm going to switch to orthographic view, press and hold left mouse button over an empty viewport area, then with the mouse button still depressed, press and hold alt and space and drag the mouse. When the dash line appears, release alt and space but keep the mouse button depressed. Drag the cursor through the reference mesh and release the LMB to draw a cut line. Create the second line using the same method. Now, click the middle mouse button on the first line and the sticky line indicates the location of the base edge ring. So if you have, you have, if you have activated symmetry, it's best to put this edge ring as close to a symmetry plane as possible. Hover over the other line and depress the left mouse button. Don't release the left mouse button just yet. Keep it depressed. Drag the mouse left and right to uniformly change the number of segments in a patch. And use control and shift keys to individually tweak the number of loops and rings just like you did when you were creating patches. I'm gonna set 16 rings and maybe 2 2 loops, I mean 1 loop. Alright, when you're happy with the result, instead of releasing the left mouse button, press enter. This will tell Anvil not to use camera projection for patch generation and will snap the newly generated mesh to reference mesh using its normals instead of camera projection. Okay. And know that we are still in draw mesh tool. So this is all you need to know in order to get started with the draw mesh tool. There's of course more to it like using existing splines as draw mesh curves and drawing meshes outside of retopo mode, but this I leave as a subject for another video. So thank you for your attention and happy retopo!